Marsha, Marsha, Marshall. <laughs> How are you? Good. Paulina. Hello. I want to introduce you to some of my friends. Okay. We work at R. So it's important to have energy for working out. Okay. You can just put all your gear on the side, bring a water bottle. I'm going to put you on uh, my friend Mr. Treddy right here. Okay. The game that we're playing right now is about muscle up, fat down. A crash course diet, a lot of the popular diets ignore musculature altogether and all they do is strip fat off. The problem with that is that you have this metabolic rate. There's a, your daily life today, there's a, a minimum amount of calories you need to do your, your regular routine. If you take muscle off this body, this metabolic rate goes down. The reason why I'm not gonna have you do most of the time crazy, in insane like exertion is because that's how you destroy muscle. Yeah. So we're gonna be, we're gonna learn how to walk powerfully. Today, Paulina, you get to do something called proxy learning. Proxy learning is where we are proactively trying to learn from each other so that we can pick up the benefits of that learning uh, rather than sometimes stumbling and failing or making a similar choice. So there's some great learning for you to do while listening and getting your jam on right here. Great. All right, well, um, what we're gonna do here is just have a breakthrough conversation. As you've been looking, Marshall, at the last t couple of weeks since you started this journey, you've been on trips, vacation, the eating, how's the eating been going? It's been very interesting switching to a lot more protein, none of the, garbage meats or, or just garbage food generally, right? Yep. I found since I wasn't like focusing on finding the trashiest, tastiest food yep. where I was on vacation, I was actually enjoying my time with family more. Oh. Cause I was just, we're just doing fun things as a family instead of getting you know, my stomach all full and feeling sick and all yep. that kind of stuff. It's one thing to know that, hey, months from now I'm gonna look back if I keep this habit up and I'm gonna be heavier, but really, there's a connection to the way you feel and the energy you have. You know, you're sticking to how many calories right now a day? Uh, 1750. And the calories you're eating are clean. Yeah. And if you had to guess, how many calories would you say you had been eating a day? It's hard for me to calculate because I'm not the kind of person that can sit down and eat one huge meal. Yeah. I'm just consistently eating throughout the day, nonstop. Yeah. Why do you eat this way? It was a way of self-medicating. It was, I'm stressed or I'm depressed. Um, I have too much to do. And so here's a, meant I have an emotional dependency on it, right? If you have a belief that makes you feel bad, that needs medicating with food, that means that we had to go all the way back to the root and there's something wrong with the way that you think. You're likely believing something that's not true. And we're gonna find out why you do this. Why do you self-medicate with food? And when you have that thought, what's the first memory that comes up for you? My family and I, we've just finished a backpacking trip where uh, backpacking to Machu Picchu. And my feet are on fire, they hurt like crazy. And uh, the trail guide is just uh, asking the rest of my family and myself included if we wanted to continue on to a, a higher ruins and peak. My whole family wants to go and uh, I just can't, my, my feet hurt too much. Yeah. And uh, so they all go on and I stay there by myself. I get left behind. So as you feel alone, abandoned, in a foreign place you've never been before, your feet in pain, what did you decide about Marshall? That I don't deserve to have people there with me. All right, go ahead and open your eyes. Now that our eyes are open and we're awake, and we're now looking at this 13-year-old's thought, I don't deserve to have people in my life. 
Isn't it true that what you wanted was the opposite? Yeah. So here's my question. Can you think of ways and examples of how you isolate or push people out so you can make this idea right that you don't deserve to have people in your life? Sit and watch TV, or I get on my phone, or play some video games. And it's like, obviously there are video games and things I could be doing, doing the same things with my family if I wanted to, but I'm doing it by myself. I have this beautiful family and instead of engaging with it 100%, I'm doing something alone, doing something by myself. So this is super important to actually see this habit. You have a craving for people, yeah. you do not have permission, so you disconnect and it feels bad, so you turn to food. This is the pattern that produces a body like this. So every time you're grabbing a Skittle, every time you grab an oatmeal cookie, what is it you actually want? I want human connection. You want human connection? Yeah. For you to stay in the new body you're building, you can't keep the old idea of aloneness, isolation, sadness, food. You've made food your friend, and you need to make people your friend. Sometimes having a meaningful relationship, Marshall, is just about being open and vulnerable and authentic and talking. Sometimes there is an environment of activity and doing things in the background that create that openness too. So we gotta build a body that can support some of that. Make sense? Yes. Are you ready to take that on? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Because at the end, I have a very specific ask that's going to be quite a behavior modification to foster connection. Okay. You ready? I'm all in. Okay. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Exhaling slowly through the mouth. Go back 13. Machu Picchu. Feet on fire. Feet are hurting. You've done so much work. They want to go to the top of that beautiful overlook. It's very steep. It'll probably be another hour to cli of climbing. And there's a part of you that knows that while my body hurts, do you really want to be alone? No. So before a choice gets made, imagine for just a moment that we could bring you a year from now into the scene. Fit, healthy, 100 plus pounds less feeling strong, fit, and good, having gone through an amazing year of transformation. What do you want to tell this young man? You deserve to have people in your life. Uh, your family needs you. And let's get up this mountain. Wow. Let's do it together. And as he gets up side by side with you to climb that last hour to the peak, the most beautiful, extraordinary view and you finally make it to the top. Do his feet still hurt? Yes, they're on fire. But as you pause to look at that view, what do you want to say to him now? You did this. You did it for yourself. You did it for your family. And you deserve this. And as you look out at the most beautiful vista, breathe this in, speak this out loud, I love my life. I love my life. I love being healthy. I love being healthy. Even when it's challenging. Even when it's challenging. I get to have people in my life. I get to have people in my life. I deserve to have people in my life. I deserve to have people in my I life. I celebrate having people in my life. I celebrate having people in my and life. And I love being in their life. And I love being in their I life. I love people. I love people. I deserve to have people in my life. I deserve to have people in my life. Now I want you to say it like you're reclaiming it. Open your eyes and claim this. I deserve to have people in my life. That's 70% Marshall. I deserve to have people in my life. A little bit more, brother. I deserve to have people in my life. That's it right there. And who's gonna make that happen? I am. Whose job is me. that? Me. So let me ask you, do you need five more hours of screen time every day? No, I don't. What do you actually crave? I crave to be with my family, with people, with everyone around me. I wanna so, connect with them. So for this week, I wanna give you a challenge. Okay? No TV after work and no video games. Okay? For one week, I want you to create an extra 30 hours a week and here's the only choice you get to make. 
to be connected with family, to do something with them for just one week. Okay. Deal? Yeah. Paulina, what are you learning? You've been hustling. I, I, I see you. I see a hustling. I see you pushing. You're doing a fantastic job. What are you learning from this interaction? Over here on the elliptical. I'm like, yes, Marshall. Yes. I wish I could say that. <laughs> you wish you could say what? Just be it more positive like that. Are you really that negative and mean of a person? No. No. I tell myself that I am. Yeah. Is it true? No. Who do you actually want to be this moment moving forward in relation to positivity? Yeah, I want to be a more positive so, person. So want to be is a desire. I am. Thank you. <laughs> I am are two of the most powerful words. I am. I am a positive person. I am a positive person. By the way, are you average positive or are you above average? Above average. Are you above average or super above average? Super above average. Really? So, yes. so you would say I, I'm an incredibly positive person. Yes. Can you hear it? I am an incredibly positive person. It's my way. It is my way. It's who I choose to be. It is who I choose to be. And I love be. being that way. And I love being that it's way. It's who I choose to be. It's who I choose to be. Is it true? Yes. Because who makes it true? Me. That's right. Yes. And anyone can change today. Anyone can change right now. You don't have to be who you've been if who you've been doesn't support your greatness, if it doesn't support you living your highest and best life. Guys, time to hop off the machines. You did a great job. You got your car to get done. And uh, we are moving on to arm day. So, uh, Ryan, let's put you and Pauline on biceps right here. Marshall's going to start on triceps right here. This is starting position. Now, hold up. Again. Good. Under the box. Show me that lock that position. Your arms could not bend anymore. Good. Here's eight. Keep going. Over halfway there. Here we go. Seven. Seven rock star. Mm -hmm. I feel good. Okay. I'm the queen of positivity. I'm the queen of positivity. You're done. Paulina, good job, sister. Awesome. Yep, and breathing is right. Now at the top, I need you to just do me a favor and squeeze for a half second. It's called an isometric hold. Time under tension is what we're doing here. We never have a rest at the bottom. And it's where you're squeezing your biceps to the point where the focus here and hurt this. Squeeze it, hurt this, good. But not, don't hurt your face. Five. You're almost there. Four, yes, here we go, three. Take the rock out of your back. Two, just one more, slow control. All right, put it down. Good job, Marshall. We want to keep ourselves safe and protected. And the moment you know that the integrity of your form is being sacrificed, instead of breaking it, do as much as you can. And even if you were alone and you stop, and then have to go back down and you don't finish the rep, you're still working the muscle. Never breaking form is more important than an amount of weight you'll ever do. Let me give you your next stretch exercises. Uh, Coach Ryan is going to coach you guys through both of these. So you're going to push it back up. Yep, with that tricep. Now I'm going to come all the way up. And then we're going to do a squeeze at the top end. Here we go. Elbows forward. Down. Up. Down. See how see how down I am? I'm not, I don't stop here. Down and up. up. Three, good, two, and one. Down, release the straight face, relax. Good, good, good. Here we go, Marshall. Nine, nine, yes. Today was such a hard workout for me that I am excited to see when I can power through it and just watch myself get stronger. What motivates me is other people around me and I have a tough time motivating myself. So having Marshall there as my teammate and knowing that he's doing it right next to me really pumps me up to keep going.
I feel that I need to practice believing in myself moving forward with breakthrough so it can work for me because at the end of the day, I want it to work. A little bit nervous about doing breakthrough. It's my first time ever doing it, but it was not as painful as I thought it would be. You know, it was, it was pretty natural. It's just kind of a real personal conversation. So I'm really looking forward to doing a week without, you know, video games, screen time, and it's really getting to connect with the people that matter most to me. I am confident that Phil and Emily, I'm confident that Pauline and Marshall, they're gonna get their outcome. But what I get really excited about is what they learn along the way, because it's not about having a fit body. That's a natural byproduct of thinking the right thoughts intentionally. Team Casey with Phil and Emily, Phil is very, very competitive, and so he's already down 15 pounds, I know this, so they're off to a really strong start. I think Team uh, Ryan is lagging just a hair because Marshall was out of town, and even though he was doing the right things and being on as best he could, they're really just kind of pulling together. And so what I hope both teams really figured out is, oh, we've got to really, to manifest what we want, we got to be very outcome oriented and learning how to be joyful along the way in the journey. So we can keep a positive energy, if we can love how we're doing it and then focus on the outcome, then we're going to get more of what we focus on. So Team Ryan, we're gonna have to step it up a little bit. Let's find out how much.